How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today there's a couple of things to be honest. The main mission I'm going to do is called Don's Right Hand and that's to get the trailer store unlocked. Um, got up a bit late, didn't have time to really get stuck into uh, the review of the Phoenix truck so I wanted to get the trailer store unlocked but I was also curious myself how to get the Tatra Force unlocked. And I read through all the missions in my own time just to kind of work everything out like access to locations all that. No none of the missions said to unlock the Tatra so I assume we have to do certain missions to unlock uh, before we even unlock a mission that will allow us to unlock the Tatra Force. And then at the end, this is the footage of it, for some reason I just had a gut feeling saying just go to the trailer store and go to the trucks and just have a look at them. Um, so I did, now this is what I was doing when I was trying to figure out like how do I figure out which mission I need to get the Tatra. And then yeah, as you can see, there was a little like yellow explanation mark in the top corner and it now let me buy it. I don't have to do any missions or anything to unlock the Tatra Force anymore. I unlocked the Tatra Phoenix in uh, on the live stream yesterday and then yeah, so this is it. I just bought two of them because like I said, I'll, I thought, well sod it, I'll grab it. I, my gut feeling is that, I don't know, maybe people have said to the SnowRunner people, you know, oh, I don't want to do all these bloody missions, I just want access to the truck now. So my gut feeling is maybe SnowRunner devs have sort of changed their mind and just give it, just let us let us have access to it now. And then maybe that one that's actually on the map, you know, we can just, we'll unlock and own that one as and when we get round to it, which if they have done that, if that's the case, that's pretty cool. So... Then once I found this out, I was like, well, okay, then I'll kind of restructure the focus of this video just to be back to doing Don's right hand, but I'll just do it with uh, one vehicle will be the Tatra Force, one will be the Phoenix. And then like it just gives us a little chance to see how they both perform and everything. Um, just as a quick random one, I've put the sideboard bed on the Tatra Force, and as you can see, it's red. It, obviously, the colours don't match. If you then go into the paint store... You can paint it whatever colour you want and it'll now match. I just wanted to leave that in because it wasn't the end of the world, but I did have a slight little hit of OCD where I was like, I don't really want a red sideboard on the back of my green truck. I then went to the paint store to paint this truck red <laughs> just so they match, and then while I was flicking through the paint, I was like, oh, it is now kind of matching it up to whatever colour I choose. So, yeah, just throwing that out there. But, yeah, so that's basically what I'm going to do today is use both these trucks. And this is the mission Don's right hand. Um, I'm bringing a load of supplies to this port in the top corner, which when it's done, I'll unlock a trailer store, which is handy. And I need to get uh, two lots of concrete slabs from that pier place. But I also need to get three lots of cement from the second map. And there's the entrance to the second map. So the uh, cement I need to get is there. So it's near enough like the opposite side of the map. Um, yeah, and then there's five pieces of cargo in total. And again, because I've not got a trailer store, um, that's why I've kind of got two trucks because there's a two slot trailer right outside the garage so I can use that. I'm going to send one truck there and one truck to the second map. The reason I settled on sending and then I'll pair them both up and road train it up to the uh, the pier. I'm going to take the Tatra 4 to the second map just purely because I've just got it now. This is my very first drive in it. First things first, <laughs> get my priorities right. Could I fit a goddamn horse with a vehicle on the roof? Yes you can. Wears it pretty well. Fits like a good one. And uh, yeah, so I'm taking him with me. Um, so yeah, I'm sending the Tatra Force to the second map just because it'll be more of the video will be me driving this. And like I said, I did the uh, I drove the Phoenix yesterday in the video uh, in like the live stream of that quite a lot. Um, as well, I will just say with a loaf, uh, I recovered him from the second map because I was using him on the uh, the second map yesterday in the live stream. I'm going to drop him off on the second map, but I just recovered him because I wanted to see if I could fit it on the roof of this. But then now when I drop the loaf off on the second map. His roof rack's all refreshed and everything again. So I am going to take the loaf off the roof of this truck so we can see how the truck drives when it's got no extra weight. Like a goddamn horse on the roof. Which, as I've said before, the loaf's weightless when he needs to be. He's, uh, he's no trouble. So yeah, this is the trailer that was just abandoned there right outside the garage. There is a possibility. Um, there's a semi-trailer on the second map. Um, fairly near to where you, we're going to grab the cement, to be honest. And... I could grab that, but I wanted to use one of these new trucks, the new Tatra trucks, but sadly both of them only have the option of saddle high, so I, I'd need a saddle low to be able to get that sideboard semi-trailer. But then I'll have to drive a vehicle that, you know, we've already had and seen on video for months, so yeah, in the end that's why I went around this way, like obviously this setup I can get four lots of cargo in this, two lots in the other one, so this needs to get three cargo, uh, the Phoenix needs to grab two. So yeah, just in the end it's all worked out that way. 
And this thing, like first impressions, uh, not too bad. There's definitely elements of it I, like, I quite like. It. Uh, it's got pretty decent fuel tank. It's got the roof rack. There's... I'm, I'm not sure if they might have fiddled around with the mechanics, just say the background mechanics of the game in general to where um, I don't know it's like it's it's not that I don't believe that the revs are there it's like sort of like they're not being applied as quickly it's not feeding the revs in as quick but the other thing as you can see now I'm now starting to wheel spin and I'm stuck and uh, I'll put it in all-wheel drive low range diffs on all that sort of stuff but I'm still stuck and personally I feel like that's not a particularly insane place for a truck that should be of this caliber to get stuck. I'm not blaming it specifically on this truck, but what I was kind of like as I've been driving around early, I was trying to think of how I'd explain it. So, for any of you that have seen previous videos where I've said you got like mud, and then we've got super mud, and then we have death mud in sort of phase four and stuff like that, now I would call it a different one again. I like, for the sake of it, I'll call it slick mud. So, Whereas before, like, the super mud and death mud feels like it locks your... It's it's sticky and it locks your truck in place. And to the point where, even if you didn't have the diff locks on or whatever, it, some of your wheels wouldn't even turn because they're just stuck in the mud almost. Now it feels like you're not getting stuck, it's just the mud is slippery. So it's sticky instead of slippery. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yeah, so it's like you're not getting stuck in the mud you just haven't got the grip to get out of the mud so in some ways I, I suppose I do feel like it's probably it's the same end result so I wouldn't go as far as to say it's better but it's at least it's different it's like if you got shot every day for the next 10 years and then somebody stabbed you <laughs> you'd appreciate them mixing it up a little bit um yeah it's just a different way of becoming stuck it sort of feels like the only reason why I sort of see it as a hint of progress possibly but I won't hold my breath for it is now I feel all they need to do is just blanket upgrade the entire tyres stats just yeah like 10 10 15 percent or something just up every tyre stat and then see how it feels from there so in it's potential that it could be closer to like good stuff but yeah that's just how I feel like more trucks sort of have just been wheel spinning rather than feeling bogged down it just feels like there's no grip but um yeah I mean this truck this is the one that's got uh, not only the sort of, not the low range, but it's got like the advanced special, the special, the multi-purpose, all that sort of stuff. Uh, the Phoenix is the one with the high range and everything. So, I've already, I would sort of prefer the Phoenix in the sense of it's got the high range, but then this one, um, I don't know, there's probably certain characteristics of this. It's got better, it's got a few more different attachments and things you can add on to the back, which is nice. It doesn't have rear steer. The turning circle is definitely worse than the Phoenix. Uh, yeah, so this is going to what? Antonovsky. Matt, what? Antonovsky Nature Reserve. Antonovsky is actually not that hard to remember. Um, yeah, so now I'm on the second. Like I say, this is the line I've drawn. I'm going to kind of cut across the river bit because I've not built that bridge or anything like that yet. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit of driving the load. You'll see how the load's got them horse. He's, uh, he gets off in his own time when he needs to. <laughs> Sounds a bit dodgy, that does, but that did make sense. Uh, again, this map as well. Like, I spent quite a bit of time driving around on this one yesterday in the live stream, and uh, yeah, I still quite like it. Just even to see now when I press, it's just a nice, bright looking map. Um, I, I still actually feel the maps are pretty balanced, despite what I was just saying about that slick mud. And like I say, sort of a, almost a new take on the mud. Uh, yeah, I don't, like. I'd rather that than death mud, if I'm honest. And I don't you know, like that's the best way I can just explain the difference. Is I feel lack of grip rather than just being like glued into place. But yeah, you can see a little bit here. I, I just I don't feel like it feeds the revs in as quickly. But again, I don't think that's specifically this truck. I feel like they might have changed it across the board a little bit because I kind of got the same vibe uh, from the Zik 605R. And I mean, that's basically what this thing is kind of competing with because it's eight-wheel drive, uh, you know, it's got the roof rack, the bigger fuel tank and all that. Um, it's got like, the, yeah, the uh, I use the advanced special gearbox all the time. A lot of people recommend the multi-purpose gearbox. I just don't like how it 
goes on oh no, as the fine tuned in it. What was the multi purpose? I didn't. Oh yeah, it's the multi purpose. It doesn't have a high range gear. I think that's what I don't like about the, that one. See, one of the nice things as well when you put a goddamn horse on the roof is it kind of exaggerates the tippiness of the truck, so you can see what its point is, and you can see I'm tipping now. Fling a winch out. Loaf gets off because it's a goddamn beast. That allows me to just seesaw back to my wheels, and we're off. Um, yeah, like. I don't know, it was quite just sort of handy to see how the truck behaves. Point being, once I was tipping sideways, it didn't try and keep carrying me with it. I will say though, because I flung a winch out there, and there's probably a little bit of footage coming up later that will show it a bit better, but I also feel like they've... I don't know if they've nerfed the winch, or if they've just nerfed the rate at which it retracts. So like, you know, if you're in middle of in the middle of tipping, and you try and just sort of fire a panic winch out. It's not snappy enough, necessarily, to kick in and retract enough winch to stop you tipping. I sort of felt a little bit like that as well. So, we'll see. Again, they might have, because um, just when they update it, it sort of causes a ripple effect throughout the rest of the coding and certain things start acting up. So, for the first week, I kind of give everything a bit of a free pass. I talk about it, obviously, because... I'm making videos on SnowRun, I'll, I want to mention it to see what you guys are saying about it, or you guys might have noticed the same thing and be like, oh cool, I'm glad it's not only me that's noticed it or whatever. But yeah, I kind of give them, you know, a free week or so anyway, it's like iron out the little bugs. After that, it's sort of like, yeah, now you're slacking <laughs> if you haven't fixed the little bugs. But um, like I said, when you select a winch manually, it brings that little, like, truck health menu up now. That's a pain in the ass, but again, I'll... I'll grin and bear it for a week, give them a chance to patch it out and all the rest of it. See, it's like the slowness there of trying to wind up through the gears feels a little bit excessive, but once you do get into sort of... If you can get it above first, it's first it doesn't like getting out of, but once you are, you can tend to get third, fourth, fifth, and then it'll plough along a little bit. Well, apologies for that, there's a little glitch going on there. But now I'm getting sort of past all these boggy areas as well. Not this one in front. I got caught on something as well. I can't remember if the footage has already appeared actually because I was rambling along. But um, I'm not sure. It's like some little shrub in the floor. Look, barely the size of a fat hedgehog. But I got 100% stuck on it, which yeah, I've been getting snagged on a few things. This truck as well, for what it's worth, it's got 50 inch tyres, so it's 4 inch bigger than the uh, Phoenix, which I like that about it. Nose clearance and that doesn't seem too bad. It's not amazing. It's not the best truck in the game, nose clearance-wise, but it's not bad. Not a bad selection of um, sort of different front bumpers that can go on it. I cut all that out just because I'll do a review on this truck, obviously. Like, now I've got this. Again, I gen I didn't go sleep again last night, so I have been I, will I ha had been awake for about 50-something hours. I then fell asleep earlier on the sofa for an hour or two. Um, I don't know if that's now <laughs> ruined my chances to be able to go to sleep later. So, but yeah, if uh, if I can just get sleep, so I don't waste all my time trying to get sleep, then I'll do the uh, I'll do the first review video for one of these trucks. I'll probably do the Phoenix, but I'm keen on doing both of them pretty soon. So I'll uh, yeah, I want both of them out this week. And like I said, that's what like this video became in the end, was just a chance to do a bit of gameplay, uh, get talk about the um, the fact that I've now just got this truck. I don't need to do a load of little hoops to jump through to unlock it, which is pretty nice. And that's why I'll probably make the title of this video sort of Don's right hand and then, I don't know, Tatra Force need to know information or something. I don't want to be all clickbaity about it, but... Some of you might now have already read up, oh, I need to do X, Y, and Z mission to be able to unlock it. And yeah, it turns out if you just go back to the garage and look, you might already have access to it because the devs might have changed their mind or whatever. I don't know 100%. It could even be because I unlocked the Tatra Phoenix. I don't believe it is that. My gut feeling is, like I said, the devs have just... Enough people have said, what? I don't want to do all these missions. I just want it now. And then they've gone, yeah, sod it. All right, then. Which is good, there's a few nice things as well, just to throw it out there, that I like with this update, other than I like the feel and the brightness of the map, and the Michigan-ish feel to it and all the rest of it. Just little things, like, so far, every place I've been to, like here, where I'm going to get the cement, it's not said, 
number of cargo left. And to be honest, I prefer that. I just, if somewhere's got cargo, I just want it to have cargo, if I'm honest. I get what they were trying with the limited amounts of cargo and all the rest of it, and it's cool, but it just starts drifting into the territory of, like, yeah, cargo admin. I've got to remember how much did I have there, what did I have over there, and it's like, I don't really want to play cargo admin. It's like, just give me some cargo and I'll deliver it. <laughs> I don't need to, like, try and keep track of what's where and when. You'll see now, it's a pretty good example. Turning circles are a bit of a slow beast. Like I said, no... No uh, rear steer or anything. That horn was an accident. My, uh, my budget control freak rubbery things on the analog stick was slipping off. <laughs> you can still tell from that trailer. Like, I can't reverse without that thing just wanting to jackknife and tip. I would have much preferred to do this with a saddle, uh, like a sideboard semi-trailer, sorry. And then what I probably would have done is done this whole mission with just one truck. I could have gone and got like these supplies and then still had two slots left to go and get the uh, two concrete blocks. But as I said, it just I, I can't have a saddle low on either truck. Which I think both of them should have a saddle low, but I could forgive this one not having one more because at least it's got the 50 inch tyres and it's taller and blah blah blah, but the, uh, yeah, the fact that the Phoenix has got tiny tyres for a truck that isn't letting us have the saddle low. That being said, I will say to the Phoenix's credit, I've only drove it around yesterday in the live stream and some tonight, considering their 46 inch tyres, they haven't felt much of an issue that they're not quite as big as that it'd be handy if they were, if you're not, again, this is 15 inch tyres, it's just, it's better. Everything's made to scale to where it's like, yeah, that's why if you get the like Arnie S100 with someone was saying yesterday, like 91 or 93 inch size or whatever, it just dominates everything. Nothing in this map was ever designed to give a 90 something inch tyre any trouble. And that is, ir ironically, <laughs> on the other end of the scale. What I love about the loaf, because considering it has tiny tyres and should theoretically get caught on everything and be a complete pain in the ass, it's an absolute beast at flying over rocks that are like as tall that it just doesn't get caught on anything for whatever reason. The loaf just works. See now, once I've got it up into the gears, it's like it's quite nice at this pace. Like it'd certainly be a nice truck to use on stuff like um Black River and all that probably would be the thing is like if I use this truck on Black River for example you could easily say oh that's easy mode and then I sort of agree but at the same time it's like I can make it hard mode by going the awkward routes so there's no guarantee that it's easy mode just because you've made it possible to have it as easy mode but you can easily throw that straight back out by giving yourself more of a challenging route and all the rest of it so yeah it's just that's what I mean these days it's like if they gave me a truck that was a beast I would push the limits of that truck a lot further whereas when they play it safe with this game I tend to then go I'll sod it I'll play it safe then and I'll just drive down that road and I'll drive down that road and you know I, I like I sort of yeah if they upped their game <laughs> I'd up mine to kind of compensate for it as well but if I didn't want to, then it's easy mode for me, who cares? I actually think as well that some of these maps kind of work pretty well, that they're smaller maps. Not necessarily saying I'd complain if they were bigger maps, but just still, I've not felt like as much of an issue for how... You know, the maps aren't rapid, and I wasn't expecting them to be sort of Black River levels of just quite easy to travel around but yeah it's feels like pretty decent considering how harsh the terrain is and all the rest of it it sort of all uh, fits together quite nicely Oh yeah, the roof rack, by the way, just while I remember, randomly. I believe it was 300 repair points and 160 or 180 litres of fuel. 
Which is not too bad. It's not as big a roof rack as like the Zix. Or whatever, but... It's got the same size roof rack as a loaf, so do what I did. Stick a loaf on the roof now. It's a 600 repair point roof rack with... Um, what's it going to have? Like 280 odd litres of fuel? Oh, no, more than that, actually, because then you got the 80 litres in the loaf. So probably like 360 litres of fuel spare as well. So yeah, not far off like a full tank. Seemed like the trailer was a bit keen to keep tipping there. Yeah, I believe it did unpack the uh, cargo in the trailer. But it's still good in the sense of if the trailer tipped enough to unpack the cargo. Personally, by the way, I think they need to up how much you can tip before it just auto auto disconnects the cargo. But the fact that it didn't carry me over with it, it was close there. I was flinging a bit of a panic winch out to me left. But yeah, we got away with it. Goddamn horse. Which it worked out pretty nicely because, like I said, I did just kind of want to drop the loaf back off on this map so he's all got his repair points, whatever it is I'm up to when I get back to this map. He's, uh, he's there and ready to go. I'll probably end up bringing another one with me. <laughs> Can't resist. So I could have turned right there and just kind of gone the proper roadway but fancied my chances, just cut through the farm a little bit. seeing if the horn would kind of blow that trailer up next to me and flick it out of the way but I was having none of it so the nice thing is just cutting over that grass I was just driving on if this was a snowy map that wouldn't be grass it would be death snow and I'd be forced to go half a mile an hour And yeah, well, the trailer tips again. You can see they're a little bit sluggish getting up through the gears. But if you can get to fifth, it's not too bad at staying in it. I mean, again, overall, I still quite like them. This and the uh, Phoenix. I actually think I'll use both of them. Well, I will anyway, because they're new trucks. But I mean, I don't feel like I'm twisting my own arm just to get footage of them. So what I'm going to do, I've gone back to the first map and you can see the little line I've drawn. Uh, I'm just going to get it a little bit closer to where I want it. And then after I've gone and collected the next stuff with the Phoenix, I can bring the Phoenix back, pair both of these up as like a little road train. And then yeah, take them to the, uh, the port. And I'm still not 100% sure yet what used to be the mission you had to unlock to get the Tatra Force. I was going to do this mission and then see if it unlocked anything, but I don't... I didn't, do you know what? I'll be honest, I didn't even check. Well, you'll sort of see why at the end. It was a little bit of a glitch going on, but I got around it. See, like there, I just... It's not too bad. It did... Uh, it climbed its way up there and that, but... Yeah, a little extra 10% of grip won't go amiss. And I think where that blue dot is was where I got bogged down on the way when I had the loaf on my roof but I believe there was more of a ledge I, I think I kind of got snagged on something one thing I will say about this latest phase it appears they have uh, hired somebody new at the snowrunner office and he's called like Rootman or something and he's gone and put roots all over the place so Rockman appears to have uh, chilled out a little bit not everywhere, but, you know, not gone mad with it. But, yeah, Rootman has just put roots all over the place. And they're what literally catch on... Like, they just lock into the hitboxes of stuff too severely. But, again, sort of a week's window to hopefully they get on it and sort a few things. So, yeah, I'm just going to park this here because now I'm going to switch to the Phoenix. And I will just say, by the way... For speed of completion of this mission, I probably very likely would have been better off sending the Phoenix to go and get 
those three cement things I just did, and then if I wanted to use either, send the uh, Tatra Force to this one I'm doing now, just because I just had to travel further, and obviously, yeah, the Tatra Force has just got the slower set of gearboxes. This thing, you can actually drop the hammer a little bit. See, like, even those, yeah, 46 inch tyres, they're not really catching me out too bad. Probably dragging in the mud there a little bit, but still enough ump to it and everything. But that's what I mean, like, in high range, with the high range set of gearboxes, it's just this game's. It's the most generous gear for giving you the power that your truck has. I was quite surprised even now that it didn't just start bleeding all its power there and wheel spinning. I got away with staying in high gear like a good 5 or 10 seconds longer than I probably should have. And when I was looking through the mission, somebody mentioned this in the comments and uh, I noticed it tonight when I was reading through all the different contracts. The amount of them that say access to location or you know, bridge restored or something was, yeah, quite a lot. Somebody basically said in the comments, like, there's a lot of, I can't remember how they worded it, but kind of fixability going onto this map where, obviously, there's a lot of options we don't have when we first start, which is good, yeah, because then, in the long run, well, yeah, we open up new options, like, oh, I'll cut round this way now. We should get easier ways, uh, more direct ways that might be a little bit trickier but are, you know, theoretically quicker if you've got the vehicle and the driving skills to get it done. But then that being said, even the route I've just took, not only now across this map, but the route I just took with the Tatra Force to go and get the cement, neither route was like... felt like it was trying to punish the crap out of me or anything, if you know what I mean. And that's where I suppose, along with like, even if these aren't objectively the the new best vehicles in the game they're objectively good enough to handle the maps that they've came with so whereas if you think like by comparison phase 4 the Zix 605R was the only useful thing the HX520 was useless the uh, CAT CT681 was useless they'd be good for other maps not saying they're like yeah they'll have their place but they just they brought nothing to phase 4 at least these do uh, yeah, so get to this pier, grab two concrete blocks. I was paying a little bit more attention, thankfully. I didn't grab, like, service spare parts this time, and, yeah. <laughs> didn't have everybody babysitting me in the comments telling me how how many mistakes I'm making. I appreciate everyone that did, because bloody hell. I was in my own world yesterday. For some reason, I actually feel more <laughs> attentive at the minute. Even though I've been uh, awake even longer. So you'll see a prime example, I believe, coming up in a second of where you get caught on things on the map. I think there's a tree stump or something that catches me in a sec. In that bridge in the distance that's obviously snapped in half or whatever, I'm not sure, but I'm, sh I'm sure I read in one of the comments that there was... <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'm sure. Um, yeah, that there was a, a repair in a railroad bridge, which I believe might be that one. So again, that might become like a, an available cut across in the future. Well, unless it's coming up on this next bit. There was something, I know, I remember, that tried to bite me when I was driving this truck back. But now, yeah, there you go. It's not the end of the world. Thankfully, it didn't quite tip me enough to where the cargo, it's unpacked it, but it didn't fall out. And if it did, I would have had to obviously drive something down here with a crane. I did test it as well, by the way. You can't equip a crane on this truck with the sideboard as well. The crane's too meaty. Again, it's weird. It's like a medium crane almost. Like, looks bigger and heftier than the small crane. 
obviously takes more room up on the back of your truck and all the rest of it. Not as big as the uh, large crane, but yeah, when I tested it yesterday trying to lift an empty two-slot trailer, it couldn't even lift it, so... I don't know, it's not... It doesn't feel like it brings anything to the table that I didn't already really have, <laughs> that we're also lacking. But yeah, I was going to say though, sorry, that tree that I just got caught on, you see how it kind of like... It just hooked on the hitbox of my truck. I bent the tree at first, but once I kind of built the tension up, it fired back, fired like under my tyre so hard that it fired the left-hand side of my truck up. And that's basically how I rolled. Another little glitch going on there. Nailing me one today. At least it's not hitting any important bits. So yeah, once we back out of that slow a bit, can drop the hammer again. Bit of a drift on that rock, but it's all good. And uh, yeah, again, nice thing with high range, just actually maintain, like, allows you to have the full range of your torque and all the rest of it, so. Even though it's trying to sort of apply drag and slow me down there, it's, uh, yeah. Truck handled it. And that's why, like, behind me is this Tatra Force. Now I can road train this pair and uh, take them in one trip. So overall, pretty good start to the missions I've been trying. I know I did I did one or two missions yesterday on the uh, live stream. I didn't want to do too many because, as I said, I kind of want to have the option of making a separate video for each mission at the start anyway, if it's, like, progressing towards unlocking stuff. So for anyone who wants to know how to unlock the, uh, the Phoenix, what was it? Uh, oh god. It was like Forester. There's a mission that was called something like Forester, or Forest Man, or something like that. <laughs> I'm sure I remember the word Forester. And then where you eventually complete that mission, a new mission will, will appear at the exact same place you just completed the last mission. And then you have to uh, do that, and then you'll get the Phoenix. And you have to repair it. Which ended up turning into a, <laughs> a right long-winded shit show when I uh, tried to fix it yesterday. Partly my own, just... I don't know. Whatever I was doing, it just was not going well. Kept biting me, kept taking longer than it should have. But it was all good. Got there in the end. The loaf, as usual. Got my horse for a vehicle. Had to send him in to uh, clean up everybody else's mess. Well, yeah, it's like everybody else's. Mine, let's be honest. The only bad thing, say, with road training these is like, because I've got the high range gearbox in the Phoenix, so it's got up to eight gears in auto, but just with the way that they do it when you're towing a vehicle, the Tatra Force is just already in a slower set of gearboxes, and I can guarantee the game isn't allowing it to go up to the, like fifth out of fifth in that case. It's, I'm barely, I think the highest gear I could get in was third, if I'm not mistaken. Unless I got lucky at some point and managed to squeeze a bit more out of it, but I don't believe so. That's why I kept sort of in the end just putting it in high gear. Might lose a tad mile an hour or two, but I kind of get it feels like I gain torque. So yeah, just if I was going to road train them, I'd rather say road train two Phoenixes. Or, well, then again, I was going to say all two Tatra Forces, to be honest. I suppose the lead vehicle just being faster is... I don't think it would necessarily make me go faster if I had a Tatra Force as the lead vehicle. So, yeah, probably it's not the end of the world, really. It's a little bit tippy there. Not sure if this that road will be clearable at some point, like when we do a mission. Obviously, there's no mission box there, but maybe if it's like part of a contract, it probably wouldn't just show up as like a mission box. Now I've got the Phoenix Pass fine, this one's going, I mean it's not tipping or anything to its credit but I could just tell, I knew it, that's why I flung the winch out and you see right there, see how there was still slackness on the winch and everything, like it, it, it did nothing to help me there. What I was hoping to do was obviously fire a winch out and sort of seesaw 
along the taut cable to just just keep me far enough away from that tree that the trailer wouldn't catch on it. But it just, even though I was hitting triangle and it was retracting the uh, the winch in, it just it did it nowhere near enough umph to it to help me in that situation. So a little bit of faffing around. Sadly, I, oh, I don't know actually. But that might not be a killable tree. There's a chance though. Well, I'll, I'll go. I'll give it a go. Next time I'm there, I'll try and kill it. It doesn't really matter though. Next time you load the map, it'll be back there anyway. So you see, in a way, like, because it's a smaller map, even though I'm having all these little obstacles and bits and bobs, it's like, I don't feel like I'm getting as, you know, impatient about it, because it's like, cool, I've not got that far to go anyway. You see, like, it's just up here I've got to travel, so it's just sort of, I feel a bit more relaxed, just chilling, doing my own thing. Or if the game is throwing little obstacles in the way, it's like, cool, because at least it's not... Yeah, like a gigantic 10 square kilometre map I've got to get across at half a mile an hour. Like that, I suppose that's basically the best way of explaining it, is like, half a mile an hour is still half a mile an hour, but now I've got half the distance to travel. Right, now I get a little bug here. So, as I drive in, I disconnect them or whatever, uh, I get the cargo management option at the bottom. So I select that and drop the two concrete blocks off change to the Tatra Force and now when I drive into this mission square it's, you see it said cargo management there so it did actually flash up the first little second I kind of dipped dipped into it but I quickly by the way just changed it to mi the middle of the day because I figured I was going to unlock a uh, like a cutscene at the end of it long story short I did all kept driving in and out the box all the rest of it it was having none of it I just quit the game completely reloaded it back up and then this is now you can see as soon as I touched the box again <laughs> what she said it, um yeah it let me press cargo management all the rest of it drop that off just quickly change it to midday again because I wanted to make sure the cutscene happened in sort of broad daylight and yeah so I've done that this is yeah the little cutscene of uh, fixing the port I just let a fly land on my TV, and it's actually watching. <laughs> it's like it's, it's it's doing it right now. It's following like as these things are landing across the screen. I'll kill it in a minute. That's the pecking order of life, but I'll finish my video first. Um, yeah, so that's it done. Another one in the bag. Uh, the big thing is I've unlocked the trailer store. The money, to be fair, was it eight, nine grand? Not amazing. Still not as good as... I still think Wisconsin had the best prices for missions and all the rest of it. However, Phase 4 felt like it had one of the stingiest. And I kind of feel like we would have got three to five grand for that mission. So eight or nine, I'll take it. Yeah, this is what I wanted, though. This was the prize to me, was the trailer store. Now I can mix and match, equip, do whatever I like. Um, yeah, a quick lap around there. But that's it. That's basically the mission done. As I said, this was, I believe part of the progress towards the Tatra Force, but I don't know or care anymore, because <laughs> it's let me have it. And that's what I wanted to let you guys know, like, check your trailer, uh, check your truck store, even if you're halfway through trying to chip away at the missions to unlock it, yeah, because you may well already be allowed it. And it does cost, by the way, like 200 odd grand versus this Phoenix is more like 96 grand or something, but yeah, it is what it is. Worst case, do what I did, put the mod on, pad your bank account, and then you don't even have to look at the cost of anything again. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, thanks to my Patreon members. Uh, I'll try and get a review of these done for tomorrow, and I'll be back soon.